So maybe Jabez had a little forward thinking, looking forward to the cross and said, not only do I want you to bless me with tangible stuff down here, I want you to bless me with a mansion up in heaven. I want you to bless me with eternal life. Because it doesn't matter if I have all these things if I don't have treasures laid up for myself in heaven. Clap your hands in this place. Because that's where, that's where you got to understand as a young person that you can, you can desire to have natural things. But just like we said earlier, what does it profit you to gain the whole world and then lose your own soul? If you are in this room tonight and you don't know Jesus, I challenge you to get to know Jesus before you leave out of here. Because it's one thing to have cars and rims and shoes and watches and rings and money down here. But oh, if you have treasures laid up for yourself in heaven, because you have given God your soul, that's more important than this stuff. So Jabez had an understanding. He called on the God of Israel. He got his Christian situation lined up with God. Then he started inquiring of God, blessed with tangible things, blessed with things eternal. And the other interesting thing I love about this is that he said, enlarge my territory. One theologian said that he believes what Jabez was asking for was enlarge my opportunities. He said he thinks Jabez was asking enlarge my opportunities. Okay. Maybe I got some African Americans in here. Enlarge my opportunities. Enlarge my opportunities to be successful. Give me more chances to be successful. Give me more ideas for business. Give me more ideas for how to create, make some invention that makes the world better. He wasn't just asking for tangible things. He wasn't just asking for salvation. But Jabez got real bold with it. He said, enlarge my capacity to do other things outside of just have disposable goods. Let me, let me park there for a second. Young people, it is more important for you to have a great idea than it is for you to have a lot of money. Because if you have a great idea and drive and the Spirit of God and God's favor on your life, then you can have residual money because of the idea that God gave you. He said, enlarge my territory, enlarge my coast, enlarge my thinking, enlarge my capacity to think past what I see. A lot of you, I don't believe me that you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Maybe you were. Hide it well. But what he's asking God is help me to think bigger than what I see. When you go in school, there's a bigger world out there than the Jordans than the, that the person has sitting on sitting next to you in your math class. The world is bigger than the car that their parents dropped them off at at school. I used to work at West Lane. This is where I met Janae, my precious little niece here. And at West Lane, you would see all, this is Washington Township, you would see all kind of different parents. You would see parents that pulled up in, in old, uh, maybe 1989 Honda Accords that were just hanging on. And then you would see parents pull up in, 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 uh, in Land Rovers and pull up in Range Rovers and Mercedes. And one of the interesting things, uh, one time I was sitting outside the building and I saw some kids, I saw one girl pull up and she got out of a Range Rover. And one of the kids was like, man, I wish my mama could drive that. I told him, I said, you know what's interesting? What you don't even know is that we just had a meeting with some people very similar to her who were, who were um, complaining to the school because they couldn't get financial assistance to pay for their lunch. You can't put a lot of stock in the things that you see people have. Things don't mean a lot. That's just parenthetic. This ain't even my sermon. But you can't put stock in what you see on 106 in Park. You can't put a lot of stock in what you see on MTV. You can't put a lot of stock into those things because trust me, being a part of the music industry myself, a lot of stuff you see in the videos is rented. <laughs> Ain't nobody flying their Bentley into the hood so they can shoot a music video. Those things are rented. It's smoke and mirrors. And so what J-Bass said was, enlarge my thinking. Enlarge my perspective so that I can see something outside of what's right in front of my face. The next thing he said was, I thought was very interesting. J-Bass said, this right here in verse 10. He said, let your hand be with me. Let your hand be with me. This is the hand of God's provision and protection. Because it's one thing to ask God for all these things. It's a whole other thing to make sure that you have God's favor on your life. 
Jabez asked for favor. He asked for things. He asked for salvation. He also asked for protection from the Lord. And this is the other thing you have to understand. It's one thing to have things and money, but one thing money can't buy you is God's favor. It's God's favor. God's favor. T.I. T.I., a very uh, popular rapper, a couple of years ago, uh, actually just recently last year, T.I. was arrested and put in prison. His money meant nothing when he was in prison. His money meant nothing when he was in prison. But I'm going to tell you something. When you have God's favor, sometimes God's favor will help you get out of some stuff. Do I have any witnesses? You got yourself in it. You know you wrong, but God's favor gets you out of some stuff that your money can't get you out of. He asked God, let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. He said, God, the last thing he said was, I am tired of being enslaved to my pain. And it's not even, keep in mind, we talked about it's not even his pain. It is pain that was put on him by his mother. But he said, keep your hand on me. I want your favor because I don't want to be associated with pain anymore. And Jabez, he cried to God with a sincere heart. And you know what the Bible says? Verse 10. The last clause of verse 10 says, and God granted his request. This is all I'm trying to say to you tonight. That if you are in this world and you have been named some things that are not who you are, whether it's by your parents, whether it's by society, whether it's by your friends, whether it's by the devil putting stuff in your mind, whether you have been molested and now you have wrestling, wrestled with thoughts of your, of your sexuality. I'm here to tell you tonight that who God has called you to be, you can be that. You have to get to a place where no matter how much persecution comes to you, that you never lose sight of who God says you are. It doesn't matter how much they oppress you. It doesn't matter how much they try to put that into your mind that because you're a young black man that you have to be a thug. Curse that. Because you are a man of God. You are a man of God. You are a king. You don't have to be a, uh, a, a girl that walks around showing everything she's got. You are a queen. I've never seen a queen half dressed. Never, never seen a queen half dressed. Jabez is like most of you. He was named something that had nothing to do with him. But Jabez had enough wisdom to understand that if he called on the name of the Lord, that God would answer him. And when he got God's attention, he asked God for very specific things. He asked God for natural things. He asked God for eternal life. And he asked for God's favor. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done.